Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked, commonly searched for postpartum questions. So let's get into it. This is going to depend on what your labor and delivery was like and how baby is. So if labor and delivery was vaginal, totally uncomplicated, and baby is very healthy and no problems, about 24 hours. If you had a C-section that went perfectly and baby's healthy and there's no issues there, around 48 to 72 hours. If you've had any other sort of complication, like a laceration or an episiotomy, that's probably going to be about 48 hours. Or if you're not medically stable, maybe you've had a hemorrhage, maybe you had to have an emergency hysterectomy, or baby's not stable, it could be even longer. So it really depends on how your labor and delivery went and how baby is. Almost anything you're going to take, whether it's prescription or over-the-counter, will go to your breast milk to some extent. The majority of it, though, will get to the baby in such low doses that it won't cause harm to the baby. Some perfectly safe things to take for pain would be Tylenol and Ibuprofen. If you're having cramping pain or those after pains, ibuprofen is your friend. You want to take ibuprofen. If you're having other sorts of pains like vaginal area pain or maybe you've had some sort of incision, then you're going to want to use a Tylenol for that. And they're actually safe that you can take them at the same time. Just make sure you space out your dosages and don't take too much in one day. When it comes to those Norco moms, because I know if you've had an episiotomy, you've had a third or fourth degree laceration, or you've had a C-section, you're probably going to be prescribed some sort of narcotic. Commonly, Norco is the one we choose. Is it safe to take the Norco and to breastfeed? If you're going to do that, what you should do is feed the baby first, and then after the baby is done, take your medicine so it has time to start working and it is less likely to transfer onto the baby. Now, is it going to cause a lot of harm to the baby for you to take the Norco? No, not really. It might make the baby like a little bit extra drowsy or sleepy, and that's not good because they're hard to wake up and hard to feed. But you can definitely take a Norco. You're allowed to be in pain if you've just had some sort of surgery, right? So you can definitely take the Norco, but I would recommend doing it after a feeding. That way it's less likely to transfer to the baby. There are lots of ointments and creams and things like that that you can use that will help with um, dry nipples, cracked nipples, sore nipples. But the big thing is you need to address the cause. Does baby not have a good latch? Breastfeeding really shouldn't hurt. If anything, it should feel like a relief to kind of get that milk out. So if it's hurting your nipples, that makes me think that baby is sucking only on your nipple and not getting enough areola in their mouth and enough breast tissue. So if that's the case and you're still in the hospital, just tell your nurse. Ask your nurse for help and they will help you. If you've already been discharged, you're home postpartum, Bring it up to your doctor, your pediatrician. There's lots of free lactation support groups you can attend where you can actually meet with a lactation consultant who can help you. The big thing here is you gotta get baby on correctly or else it will be painful for you. It kinda depends on the type of exercise. So Kegel exercises, which are gonna help build strength in your pelvic floor, those are highly encouraged from day one, right after delivery, go ahead and do those. Also, getting up, walking around, whether it's, you know, walking with the baby in the hallway at the hospital or when you get home, walking with the stroller around the block, definitely do that. We highly encourage that. That's very healthy for mom. When it comes to, like, formal exercise or, like, weight loss exercise, like a, a booty boot camp or a Pilates class or a spin class, you want to hold off on that for about six weeks. It takes the body about six weeks to heal, and you want to give it that time. A couple of recommendations I have. Don't forget to eat. That's a big one. Don't forget to drink. That's another big one. Especially if you're breastfeeding, what happens is your body takes all of your energy and all of your fluids and gives it to the baby and leaves none for you. Okay? So if you're not eating adequately, if you're not getting enough fluids, you're going to feel really, really drained. 
So make sure you're eating good, even like small snacks throughout the day. Have a little snack thing next to the rocking chair where you breastfeed, that kind of stuff. And then make sure you're drinking a lot. And then the old adage, which I always kind of roll my eyes at because people said this to me too, and it's kind of hard to do, but you really should try to sleep when the baby sleeps. I know that's not always possible. You're like, okay, they're finally asleep. Now I can vacuum. Now I can do the dishes. Now I can get the laundry done. But really, this time you need to rest. Your body just went through a lot to give birth. So you do need to rest. So sleep when the baby sleeps and that kind of other stuff, that household chores and all that stuff, that can be put on hold, that can wait. And on that same note, learn how to say no. When people invite you to things or ask you to go to do things and it's been you know, just a short amount of time since delivery, Tell them no. No one's going to think you're rude if you don't want to come somewhere and you're too tired and you have a three-week-old baby. It's totally fine. So learn to say no and also learn to ask for help. If you have a partner who can help you or if you have somebody in your home like your mom or something like that that lives with you that can help you, don't be afraid to ask for help. You can resume intercourse at around six weeks postpartum. And I know some women, they only bleed for a little bit. They'll bleed for like three weeks or four weeks so that they think, okay, it's safe. I can have intercourse at this time. It's not safe. Just because you don't have any active lochia, which is what we call that vaginal discharge, it's not safe to have sex within that six week time. You are at higher risk for an infection during those six weeks. So it's really important that nothing, no sex, no tampons, no douching, nothing in the vagina for six weeks. After that six week time period, you might note some dryness, especially if you're breastfeeding. So if you are gonna have intercourse and it is uncomfortable, I do recommend using some sort of lubricant. Again, this is a six week thing. Now your incision site should start to look a lot better and your pain should be significantly better, so significantly less, around two weeks. After baby, lots of things happen to our body. Lots of big hormonal shifts. And of course, you're taking care of an infant, you're feeding them every couple of hours, you're exhausted. So all of that is really normal. So being able to tell the difference between like the normal new mom stuff and actual postpartum depression is really important. So things you wanna look for specifically for postpartum depression include loss of appetite, a sense of like hopelessness or like I give up, extreme fatigue where all you do is sleep all day, or the complete opposite where you don't sleep at all. And then the big, big, big important things, if you're ever having thoughts of hurting yourself or hurting your baby. And what I'm gonna do, because obviously this is a very special subject, I'm gonna put in the description box below some links to some helplines for suicide and for postpartum depression, just in case that is something you're struggling with and that's why you chose to watch this video. There is no reason to be ashamed of this. It happens to a lot of people. If you need help, get help. The average amount of time it takes for a woman to get her first period postpartum is anywhere between seven weeks and nine weeks. For breastfeeding moms, it can be a little bit longer. It can be around 12 weeks. When it comes to alcohol and breastfeeding, Alcohol will 100% go through your breast milk and you can give it to the baby. So the recommendation is however many drinks you have times two, that's how many hours you have to wait. So if you have one glass of wine, one can of beer, something like that, then you need to wait at least two hours before you feed the baby. And if you have more than that, if you have two glasses of wine, you should wait at least four hours before you feed the baby. And if it's gonna be that long, then you should probably pump and dump. You don't always have to pump and dump after you have alcohol. And you can actually buy little test strips that will tell you if your breast milk is safe to give to the baby or not. And that can let you know whether you need to pump or dump or not. But kind of the general rule is one glass of wine, wait at least two hours. So if you've had one glass of wine and it's been three hours, it's probably okay for you to feed the baby. Yes, yes, you can still get pregnant while you're breastfeeding. This is another one of those like really common myths. And the reason this is, there is a reason for this myth. 
It's because a lot of times breastfeeding women have something called lactation amenorrhea, where they are not having their period while they're breastfeeding. So they think, therefore, I can't get pregnant. But just because you're not having your period yet doesn't mean you're not ovulating. You can start ovulating three to four weeks postpartum while you're still in that six week recovery period. So you have to be very careful. Do not use breastfeeding as your only means of birth control postpartum. So if you want to use something over the counter, you can buy at the store. If you want to use something hormonal, you want to talk to your doctor about that because that's going to be a little bit more specific. Certain medications like the pill, right? That can actually cause your breast milk to dry up. So you would have to get something called the mini pill, which is the progesterone only pill. Things like that you need to take into consideration. But please, please, please do not think that breastfeeding is a good source of birth control. You can still get pregnant. Even though your odds are lower, you can still get pregnant while you're breastfeeding. If you are a woman who's dealt with postpartum hair loss, you're probably wondering, when is it coming back? And then the simple answer is roughly six months. So around six months is when you should start to see some new hair growth come back. This is one that kind of depends on what's going on with you. So if you had a perfect, no frills, everything, easy peasy, uncomplicated labor and delivery, you're probably not going to have to see the doctor until about six weeks postpartum. Now, if you've had anything else going on, if you had a hemorrhage, if you were bleeding, if you had a C-section, if you had an episiotomy or a laceration, anything like that, you're definitely gonna have to see them a lot sooner. And it's really gonna depend on like your specific doctor and what they like to do. A lot of doctors for like a no frills, easy um, C-section will wait like two weeks. They'll say, okay, come back see me in about one to two weeks because I want to check your incisional site. I want to make sure your pain is under control, stuff like that. So those are the things they're looking for. If you had any sort of like serious issue, like you had too much bleeding or you had to have an emergency C-section, stuff like that, they might want to see you sooner. They might want to see you that same week that you were discharged. So it's really going to depend on what happened during labor and delivery when they want to see you next. The recommendation is one to two years. So around 18 months would be ideal if you wanted to have your children very close. We do have, you know, the six week postpartum period, but that doesn't mean your body is like, you know, 100% back to normal at week six. It just means that your uterus is back to normal at week six. It really takes about the whole 12 months for your body to go back to its pre-pregnancy state. So it's really important that you do give it time to heal and to get back to normal before you get pregnant again. That's the recommendation. I know some people, they have babies, you know, back to back right away and they're perfectly fine and that's great. But the recommendation is to wait a little bit longer. Give yourself that time. So that was my video answering your most commonly asked postpartum questions. Was there a question that you have that I didn't mention? If so, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video in answering those questions. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.